friends. Welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. Ooh. Um, for this week's fun drink of the week, we have another poppy. Poppy. This one's the ginger lime one. I think I had this one last time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we had that one at the event we went to. Yeah. Or you did. I had a different one. This one tastes, from my recollection, like a Sprite or like a 7-Up. I hope so. With ginger. First, I like how we always share one. First sippy. I don't, because why would we buy two when we're not going to finish them? <laughs> That's true. Oh my God. That tastes really bad. Does it? It tastes like apple cider vinegar. Just, were opening, we, were just we? opening it. It's not. <laughs> it's, not, it's not super like apple cider vinegar, but, but I is. see that the vibes. Tang. I, I see don't the want vibes. that anymore. No more. What? Were we okay when we had these? <laughs> I, I feel know. like we you know what? What? We went to an event. It was on, if you're from California, you've ever visited Southern California. It's not terrible, but. But it, it has is. that upper, that vinegar. My yeah. mouth tastes like feet. I hate it. I can't even concentrate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to drink water. Hold on. It's the ginger. That's why. That's what'll get you. Oh, thank God it's gone. I like, okay, <sighs> Back to my story. We were at an event. I felt like squid when he was on. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he said that. He was predicting that we were going to do that in a couple me. episodes. One thing about squid. Uh, he will never he's tell a choke. lie. <laughs> yeah, he's going to cough. He's going to hack. <laughs> um, what was I saying? We went to an event, sorry, on Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. And it was in the middle of the pier. Yeah, like dead center, honestly. It was super cute and fun, but it was in the middle of summer. It sure was, babe. And we were not prepared. And there was no shade. <laughs> So it was two exactly two billion degrees. Um, and one thing about us, we're sweaty I'm gonna girls. Sweat. I'm gonna sweat. I'm a sweaty girl. And I'm gonna complain how hot it is. And the fact that I was in a skin tight dress, um, and it was so hot that you could see my boob sweat if I moved a little too far, like raised my arms up a little too high. I just think that that's unfair to me, you I, know? Yeah, I see that. But anyways, that's where we were when we first tried the poppies. So maybe we had like a heat stroke moment <laughs> or something. Maybe we were just like like hallucinating at that point. Or maybe we were just so dehydrated that we like, like that's all they yeah. had. So we had gonna, I want to sip one more time just to be sure. It's not that terrible, but I it does. I do get the vibes. It still tastes like vinegar. It's the ginger, bro. It's like the ginger is like it gives it that like. Tang. I will say last week when I was kind of hungover and I drank that, I finished the whole thing and my tummy stopped hurting. Yeah, so I think that's a trick. So okay, add this to your list in addition to laying on your left side like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, this is the real have, trick of all. Yeah, when you have like bubble guts, like like whether your tummy tummy is like sour from like being hungover. From eating like mm -hmm. too much shitty foods, like whatever it diarrhea, may be. yeah, any sort of like stomach indigestion. If Get you drink yourself a Perrier's, bubble water, yeah, a bubble water. Like you could do like Lacroix or something, it's but not like, the same. But this shit, ooh, I don't it, know what it they has put to be. In it. I think it has to be plain. Uh, like, like what is it called? Soda water. Yeah, soda water. I guess is what it, it's carbonated mineral water. That's what it says on. That's it. what Perry is, but. That's what Perrier is. But I in the glass bottles, yeah, ice cold. It's different. I I personally prefer the lemon flavor. But like this shit will fix your gut right up, babe. That's a witch elixir. If yeah, you will. It's, yeah. This is like <laughs> some some like some kind of witchy shit. I get another thing our mom taught us. I'm telling you, yeah. you do that comboed with laying on your left side, stomach problems gone. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're go golden. You can dude. go about your day comfortably at that point. <laughs> Call us the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. So, anywho. So, for this week's episode, we did, we had a really busy week. Should we recap our week? Yeah, we did have a very busy week. Drew filmed her show twice, which is unusual. She usually films once every two weeks. Yeah. Um. So, busy, busy girl. Yeah. And I, for those of you who don't know, I film my show, I film two episodes each time I go. So, we're actually banking them right now because I got a very exciting announcement coming soon um, in regards to the comment section. But we had some really big guests this week. Yeah. And so we're um, saving some of them. But on top of that, we went to a movie premiere. We went to Disenchanted. We saw, we saw Disenchanted. It was so cute. It was very cute. I saw my very first 
I went to my first Disney premiere. I, I haven't been to invited to a Disney premiere. I don't think. Oh, I've been to invi- invited to a lot of screenings and stuff, but that was the first like red carpet. It was Disney. the world premiere. Yeah, of Disenchanted. So it was really cute and the carpet was so cute and everyone was so nice And all there. the people in the movie were there. So we got we were in the yeah. same room as Adina Menzel. I know, my God, ledge. And what we did were John like, Travolta call her? John Travolta. What did he call Adina Menzel? Adele Dezim. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that to her, that no fucking way. icon. Um, but yeah, we we saw all the cast in there, including like Maya Rudolph, who I idolize. She is so funny. Um, and Amy Adams, Ledge. So even like James Marsden and Patrick Dempsey. Like, oh, the whole like, cast so cool. was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So they were all there, which was pretty surreal. And then we watched it at the El Capitan Theater, which was really cool. And the movie itself was very cute. Loved it. I super, agree. super cute. It's out now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on the uh Disney Plus. Yeah, but on the PS5, like they'll advertise the like new movies yeah, that yeah, just yeah. dropped. And like I've seen that already. Yeah, just like, like yeah. I was there. <laughs> I want to go to there. So we went to the premiere. Uh we went to another event on Thursday, mm-hmm. which was really fun. And then we filmed again on Friday. So yeah. yesterday was a day for me to just sleep and do nothing else. Mm -hmm. I slept and ate like shit. And that's why I have a Perrier (laughs) today. (laughs) And I've been laying on my left side all morning. That's why I've been doing my bubble gut routine. (laughs) (laughs) Some people have a five step skincare routine. I have a two step bubble Bubble guts routine. You know, (laughs) you gotta do what you gotta do. So busy week. Very fun. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going into the holiday season. So you would think that it's going to slow down. It's no. not. It's not. Not at all. But yeah, very exciting. We but don't worry, we're not missing any episodes for the rest of the year. So yeah, we might so. have to start banking these with how busy we're getting. We for sure will. Yeah. So for this week, we wanted to do, uh, because we had such a busy week, we figured we would just do a part three of your favorite fan fictions. Yes. Um, because there was a lot we didn't get to. And you guys are already love these ones. Yeah. yeah. We can only get to so many throughout every yeah. episode. But so. we have a prompt for our next one, which yeah. is good. I think it's going to be fun. Okay. This first one's from Sophie. Mm-hmm. She said, in seventh grade, I wrote a fanfic about a book I read where a girl was chained up to a wall. And Loki flirted with the guard, who was another girl. And then she wrote, how did I not know I was gay? <laughs> so it was just more like softcore, softcore porn, like, like sweet, like longing glances and all of that. I don't know. I feel like the fan fictions um, that you partook in when you were younger are pretty telling. Of who you are as a person. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I was going to say, everyone was making fun of us because we didn't know what lemon meant. Remember in the last one? They said I saw smut. that. My bad. Yeah. Why don't you just say that? Take me to jail. I was like, how does that? I just don't get it. Lemon means spicy. I'm all, then just say spicy. Yeah, I just thought they would put sexual. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just call it what it is. Like, NSFW. <laughs> yeah, like 18 plus, like whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's literally what they say. Yeah. They would say sexual in parentheses. <laughs> But all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy. Oh, okay. My B. This next one's from Maddie. She said, I started writing one where I was Niall Horan's girlfriend, and I got in a car accident. The central idea that prompted me to write this was that I would be in a coma, and Niall would walk in, causing my heart to rave on the EKG, and I would wake up from a coma. Talk about cringe. <laughs> I also was pretty much addicted to Wattpad, 1D fanfics, and Imagines in high school until my dad looked at my computer search history and confronted me by reading the stories out loud. It was absolutely horrifying and traumatizing. That's not very nice. (laughs) Why you gotta why you gotta air my shit out like that? I mean, I'm assuming they were all sexual in their very nature. That's why he was like, girl, what is you doing? We were also in high school. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it's like you're reading, like you're reading shit. It's not nearly as like horrific as I think he was, it's, he's making it seem, but I'm sure it's just like jarring to find. The car accident thing's really funny because it reminds me of that like meme or I don't know what you would call it on Tumblr where it would be like, you're going into open heart surgery and Harry says goodbye to you. Yeah. He's like, who do you think gave you the heart? Yeah. That thing. <laughs> or it was like the one where he's missing teeth. What? 
Yeah, they like made a meme out of it, out okay. of like that thing, and he's all, "Who do you think gave you the teeth, love?" And oh, it's like he's oh, missing yeah, all his yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I find it so interesting that a lot of times we were like romanticizing trauma or like injury, illness. I think it's because like the idea of like someone giving their lo- their love and life to you like that. When you're not even that, well, yeah, that, but not even that. Like, I mean, like just her getting in the car accident. Yeah. Like it always has to be something horrid Mm -hmm. has to happen to you. And then, you know, these men who are like Mm -hmm. very normal dudes come in and save the day. Okay. You know what I mean? I just find that interesting that we were romanticizing like horrible (laughs) events. Like, I think that's why I really liked the ones where it was normal. Like, and I'm not talking about those where you're, you you get kidnapped by them or whatever. Your mom sells you to them. Like, those are stupid. <laughs> I never read those ones because I'm like, not real. Yeah. I need it to be real. No, me too. Me too. As like a Virgo. I loved ones that were like, you're like part of the crew or something. Yeah. Like, like that's why the Kendall Jenner one was, was such so tea. Good. Like, so good. If someone finds it, send it to me. Do you guys remember that one? We've, we literally, if I were to pick one that we talked about most in our podcast this whole year, it's that fucking fan fiction. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> We've talked about my bubble guts the most. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, but I think that's that's probably like a big Virgo thing for me though because like I need it to be real yeah I know we, we, I needed we to, that I already. needed to have an element of real which is if I think about it that's how I also play video games like I really hate ones with a lot of fantasy I need them to be real like to some extent oh, okay. like based in the real world like I need them to be like you know what I mean believable yeah. to an extent so there's like some really great games that I just will not play because they're not real <laughs> Unless we're talking Harry Potter, like the, but you the like new, Assassin's Creed. It's still based in the real world. Oh, that's true. That's You're true. still in the real. You yeah. do these unbelievable oh, see, things, see, see. but there's no like dragons. There's no witches. There's, I mean, there's some kind of witch, but like no, some of them. I see what you're saying. They're based on like history almost. But yeah, not, yeah, yeah. There's just like an element, dude. One time I bought this Game of Thrones like pick, choose your own adventure type game on my Xbox. Oh yeah, yeah. And I told Drew to wait because I wanted to play it, and she literally like played the whole thing in one day. <laughs> it was it sucked if I'm being right. I know that's why it was twenty. The way that the way though that they could make such a great game. I don't know game, why they haven't yet. Me either. I wonder if they're cooking it up right now. But like, you could make it like Red Dead Redemption, but make it Game of Thrones, sure. where like the choices you make affect how you end up in the end. Ooh, okay. like dude, Red Dead was like such. I think you would really like that game. To be honest, you think so? I was just gonna ask you. I need. I wanted stop looking at so many tiktoks on my phone i feel you and you're telling me bitch <laughs> I, was, I was looking at my xbox and i was like maybe i'll play a video game i don't know you should and you should get red dead dude like yeah great game oh, i'm gonna get the brats game too i haven't bought it yet oh that sounds fun i'll do that too okay see like if it's not sims i need it to be like real yeah you know what i mean yeah. like like and even sims is like real life kind of thing but um dude the other day what were we talking about you're saying like i was talking like, about what i talked about in therapy yeah she's like <laughs> It's like, wait, okay. We're talking to her mom. Wait, okay. So I talked about, um, and with my therapist, we were talking about, to give you a summary, we were just talking about how I'm very goal oriented. So a lot of times I don't have hobbies because unless there's some kind of gain out of it, like I'm not going to do it. So like Dason is the complete opposite of me. So she'll buy shit just so she can see if she's good at it or like wants to try it. And she'll try it and then she'll be like, okay, I'm done. And then she's done. But like, I literally will not commit myself to anything that does not have some sort of like goal or win. Out of like everything I have confidence in, I'll watch people do craft shit on my TikTok. I could do that. I could do that. You give me all the stuff. I I know because the amount of times Dason goes, I could make that myself. Yeah. She says that about everything. Like, and it's clothing, clothing, like decor for the house, like, a bag, like literally anything. She's like, I, I could, could do literally it. do that. She says that about everything. Um, but I was like basically telling, talking to my therapist about working on that because I'm trying to work on being more present and I'm always like thinking about the future and that's a mental illness thing. That's my thing. But like, <laughs> I'm trying, I want to work on like trying things just because mm-hmm. like to just enjoy myself so you know kind of like what we did during the pandemic where everyone was like teaching themselves how to make bread and like how to sew or like finishing their work projects at home like shit like that i want to like try to do so like i'm telling my mom this 
And because my mom's a lot like me. Yeah. Like she's a well, very. Drew's like, I don't have like any hobbies. Yeah, I have like telling. none. Like, she's like, I was getting embarrassed when people ask me because I'm like, I don't have one. Yeah. And then my mom I don't. Goes, yes, you do. Yeah. And like, I go, no, I don't. I was like, she goes, will you, will Dason, <laughs> Dason goes, will you play video games? I go, I mean, I guess, but like, I still play like what, like you guys just heard. I won't pick it unless it's something I can win. <laughs> yeah. Like even that, uh, even with video games, I won't like, it needs to have something at the end of it for me. It needs to be perfect before I yeah. do it or commit to it. And so my mom, <laughs> my mom literally goes, that's not true. You're really good at the Sims. <laughs> And just like, I was like, we were in a car, like someone was driving us and like, even our driver started laughing <laughs> I was like, Girl, because she read me so hard. Like, that's not something she's proud of. <laughs> <laughs> it was so sweet though. The way she yeah, was no, it was so innocent. Like my mom was so like, you're funny. really good at the Sims. What I'm do like, you mean? You're so good at the Sims. And I was like, you can't win the Sims. Like. That's but she I had a point believe, so i couldn't believe you wouldn't play animal crossing i just like didn't it just didn't call to me that's why <laughs> i told you it's sims but with animals but you're the only human yeah when i play sims the way i play sims is like i literally evict the richest family immediately i cheat to get all the money i move my family in there i immediately make them start having babies and then um i just keep them rich and then i just make them have kids and then I build more kid rooms. And You're then, a capitalist in that game. Bro. I'm like, yeah, like. You're Elon Musk. <laughs> I'm a real, no, like. You're Nick Cannon. Just the way. Everyone yeah, there. the way I force them to adhere to gender roles is yeah. in Sims. But it's literally because I love making, I love taking care of the kids in the Sims. Like, I love when she's pregnant and she gets morning sickness and shit. I just love that. Uh, shut I think up. it's so cute when they when they have them and then they have to take care of them and then you decorate their rooms and and raise them and watch them become full adults and shit. Love that. And then I always get a family dog and then they play with the dog. And then I have seasons, so it's like Christmas or they celebrate Christmas or like Thanksgiving. Super fun. I got the college one too. That one was really fun. But one of the, co they like make you, make you pick an ultimate goal for your sim. Okay. When I had the college one. And um, the goal was like, become like a scientist or like uh, ace all your courses or whatever. And one of them was like, have seven boyfriends at the same time. Yeah, that's me, right? Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do that one because that seems harder. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I was like making everybody fall in love with me. But then two of my boyfriends were in the same class as me and I kissed one of them on the lips and then they started fighting and they both broke up with me. And then I won't. You lost your challenge. Yeah. Dang it. Rip. But that was like, that college one was really fun. But anyways, my mom read me really hard when she said that. And, but she had a point. She said, that's something you play and there's no real win. Yeah. There's no goal. Well, you have your goals, but I have my own goals yeah. <laughs> for them, but there's no like end to it. You yeah. could just play forever and it's mindless in a sense. So I was like, true. Okay. This next one's from Michaela. And she said, I once read a fic called make love to a killer on Wattpad. <laughs> It's a really sketchy start. And it changed the trajectory of my life. The reader was a lawyer and hooked up with Luke Hemmings, whom the <laughs> fic was about. He was a hardened felon who was wrongfully jailed for murder. And it was enemies to lovers' excellence, to be honest. My Joker moment came quickly, however, because it remains unfinished to this day. Damn. That sucks. I know. That sounds a lot like after. Was he a felon? <laughs> yeah he was what he had been to jail a few times yeah uh -huh. dude in was that, he jailed for murder no that uh, no the the way that those movies i i haven't finished them yet oh i did see though i did <laughs> see comments of people saying that 365 like 365 days is also fan fiction that yeah. they made into a movie which i didn't know but i think they said it was 50 shades fan fiction it might have been yeah the way that they're all like weirdly tied Same together. universe. <laughs> yeah. Like the also someone was like, it ends with us as a good book. No, it's not. You don't know what a good book is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but you're telling me someone called, named Lily Bloom, who, who's a florist. That's it's a real hat on a hat. That's feels top lazy. Literary. Like that feels lazy. To me. No, it's not. I think that, you know what? You're going to eat your words. Cause those movie that movie's going to come out and it's going to look exactly like after. 
Yeah. Which everyone was excited for. And then it came out and they go, why did I read that? That's so embarrassing of me. Well, watching people act it out really humbles you, doesn't yeah. it? Because when you're reading it, you're like, wow. Mm-hmm. And then when you see it in real life, you're like, that makes me want to die. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so crazy. Are you going to read the book? Of what? It ends with us. Or you want to watch the movie and Maybe. be surprised? I'll watch the movie. You don't want me to tell you what happens? No. Okay. And then I'll see decide. It, because everybody everyone, cries. Everybody cries. It's not that it's not sad. Like, here's like, okay. You know, everyone, I remember growing up, everyone said the saddest movie they've ever seen was The Notebook. Yeah, that's not true. And then I watched it and I go, it's sad. But, but it's not like, the saddest. I'm not going to cry watching it. No, my sister's saddest, keeper. My sister's keeper. Is, I'm going to cry. When I, Moonlight. I'm going to cry when I watch that. My sister's keeper, like, fucked me up, dude. Everything, like, everywhere. All at once. Yeah. I'm going to cry watching that. Yeah. It's really just taste. Like, it's what you you deem. Personal taste, yeah. Because it depends. Like, even like. Which you have none those of. Those are. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that clip. I've heard, I think it's Alyssa Edwards. And they're like, what does Alyssa need more of? And mm-hmm. they, they're like on a live stream. Uh-huh. And I can't remember what queen. She's in the. Shayka Lee's in that video, too. Uh-huh. And she's like posing in front of the camera. And someone goes, well, we already know she lost her taste. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, see, because like, like, okay, obviously when you're comparing movies like after to Moonlight, you know what I mean? Like there's no comparison. But if you think about to put it more in perspective, if you compare after to like the summer I turned pretty, they're in the same neighborhood, but like one is obviously better than the other. I think it comes down to the writing, like of how it was written, but like. The summer I turned pretty, I was crying when they were like, yeah, with the, when they the were, ending, yeah, when they were together, like when the brother and the sister were laying in bed with the mom, yeah. dude, get out of town. I, I was crying. You know what I mean? What, even like, if you think about something like Wakanda forever, dude, which we, I don't think we talked about. No, we saw that last weekend. So good. He cried like multiple times. The way I thought I was only going to, I was only going to cry like maybe once because it's just very emotional in general, like them moving, moving on to a new chapter. Mm -hmm. But like, God damn, there was a bunch I didn't know I was going to cry at. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. But such a great movie. So good. Highly recommend. And then seeing all the, (laughs) the memes of people about in the more, like, (laughs) like I forget what you were (laughs) Like when you're saying Poppy, I'm like Agua Poppy because that's what they keep calling him. My <laughs> Agua Poppy. <laughs> that's funny. But hey, man. Well, and the girl that played Namora, yeah. she didn't speak any English when she got the role. So she had to learn English and Mayan to do What did she role. speak? What's her native language? Um, Spanish. Oh, cool. She didn't speak any English and obviously n- none of the Mayan language that they use. So she had cool. to learn both. Damn. Yeah, and their their like fits in the whole thing were so cool. Like the way everything looked. Oh my god. Like okay, Michael B. Jordan. I think he's a good looking person. Uh huh. There's something about that role that just really does it for me. Yeah, and that's not who he is at all in real life. You I can know. tell. I I think he's corny. Do you think he's corny in real life? Yeah, I do. Ugh. Based off his relationship with Lori Harvey. Yeah, I do. Remember how he was like oh. at the game, and everyone was like, maybe set that one out. When it, the, when the wound's still fresh, maybe stay inside. You know what I mean? I think he's corny. The way that they were eating him Something up. Something about Killmonger. I'm like, okay. It was a good movie. Good, um, good movie. Highly anyways, fun. yeah. Honestly, I think it was the best movie to come out of this phase of the MCU. I agree. I think that Michael B. Jordan in real life is the same as um, Chris Evans, which is the same as Harry Styles. <laughs> Cornball. Wait, Harry Styles is single now. What? Perhaps I'm bisexual now. <laughs> what? What what? I saw Tevi's uh do you see Tevi's video about it? Someone was like, please talk about them. And she was like, What do you want me to say? What? Love isn't real. They're not together anymore. Love isn't real. I saw her That's how I felt she was too. like or Tevi was like, I hate when I'm like telling people like I'm so depressed, I don't have any friends. They're like, go out. I'm like, have you been out there? Yeah. Have you seen the things that these people are doing? I'm all me. That's how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, yes, Harry Styles is recently single, allegedly. I saw someone saying he's, he, uh, it was a TikTok. She was like, he's single right before he's going to Mexico. He's literally just like me. (laughs) The fucking, the contract is up, it seems like. Yeah, they're like, it's on streaming. Have you watched it yet? Speaking of Don't Worry Darling. No, I haven't, but I know that, um, wait, what, uh, HBO. 
Oh, cool. Um, now I haven't watched it yet, but I I know Miss Flo. She's a uh, she's flawless in yeah, everything she does. Yeah, yeah, she's flawless in everything she does. So, anywho, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Oh, enemies to lovers. Yeah, yeah. That that's what made me think of like after and all that. It's like the same shit. Like enemies yeah. to lovers. Like really uptight girl who's rule follower and dresses conservatively and then she starts wearing low cut tops when she starts dating yeah, the bad lets her guy. hair down over pony till takes her eyeglasses off yeah which is giving me pick me but yeah every girl in a fan fiction tends is a pick to me. be a pick me that's true okay this next one's from rachel she said i used to write twilight fan fiction in middle school with my best friend during <laughs> class my favorite story we wrote was about edward but in the big bang theory universe <laughs> and he became best friends with sheldon but Sheldon couldn't keep the lie when he found out Edward was a vampire, so Edward had to kill him. Please don't judge me. I was in the sixth grade. <laughs> Why Big Bang Theory? But maybe that was just like one of her favorite shows at the time. But that's like one of the funniest ones we've read. <laughs> I just think like, just so how would the, why would those there's worlds no, meet? There's no lemon or smut. <laughs> it's just You and me both, bitch. When I wrote mine, there was no lemon. <laughs> Only drama and diabetes. <laughs> that's all that was in mine. Oh my God. That's so just to think about those two worlds existing at the same time. Yeah. He's in their universe. That's I so do remember funny. someone saying on one of our episodes about this, when they were talking about, um, Henry Cavill okay. and they were like, no girl, like he was so young when the twilight things came out. So like, remember when I was saying that man's in his fucking forties, like he, could oh, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. he absolutely could not have been Edward. Everyone was eating me up about that. They were okay. like, she, he's not that old. I'm all, he looks that old. Isn't that kind of the point? I feel like uh, Robert Pattinson was like as close to the age as they could have made him mm -hmm. without tipping it. But like, I mean, it's the same thing like with, vamp with Vampire Diaries. They were like 30 years old, 30 year olds only. <laughs> Do not apply. <laughs> with with don't even bother if you're under the age of 32. Um, but like, we're like, how old's the character? He's all 17. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, double it and then look for people that age. <laughs> um, I'll never forget the first time I made Billy watch Vampire Diaries. And he goes, that guy's supposed to be in high school <laughs> about Paul Wesley. <laughs> and he's well, technically he's 500 years old, but he died when he was 17. And Billy um, goes, that guy's not in high school. Come on. <laughs> and then I go, well, no shit, bitch. None of them are in high school. But Paul Wesley, I think, was the oldest out of all of them in Vampire Diaries at the time. He's older than Ian Somerhalder? I think so. By like a year oh, or two. Okay. But like he was like the oldest. So he was like literally 27 Damn. when they were filming that. Which I just find hilarious. Like, it's the same with High School Musical. But even then, like if you watch, rewatch it. Because I rewatched the High School Musicals recently. They look like they're in high school. Okay. Like you know, you know they're past the age of 17. Yeah. But like they look like they could be in high school. Yeah. And maybe not Corbin Blue. But like <laughs> for some reason he looks like a full grown man. Like yeah. compared to the rest of them. Yeah, or that Jason kid, like he looks way too old, yeah. but like, like Zach Efron, like he looks like him he, and Vanessa, I and Vanessa yeah. like even Ashley Lucas Grubiel, like they look like they could very easily have been like sure, 19, sure. 18, 19. Like I'm in high school, but I got held back a year. Okay. You know what I mean? But like <laughs> Bear Brothers, they were like full grown men only. Even the girls didn't look like they could have been in high school either. <laughs> Vampire Diaries. <laughs> I don't know why they never start them in college. Is it because like, of the longevity of the show, maybe why they don't pick kids in high school. Yeah. Like, or high I, school age. I think it's because like when kids are all 16, they all look different. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I just mean like in the acting world, like you could pick people that are like in their early twenties, but like look young. Well, I think that's what they're trying to do with Euphoria, but it's not yeah, working. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I, well, Euphoria, I get, because they show them having sex and doing yeah. things like that, so they're not going to have actual None of them are in that. high school, and they don't look like they are, yeah. to be honest. And I think that's the point. Yeah. And so, but I don't know. I think a lot of times they start them in college based off, like, what they're hoping the longevity of you the show is. You know what show the kids never look like they're in high school? Oh. It is One Tree Hill. That's true. Because I've watched, unfortunately, I've watched One Tree Hill all the way through probably twice. And it was just super really? embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. My friends all went through a really big One Tree Hill phase in college. And then I rewatched it. Too about, white for about, me. I know. 
it's it's like so bad that you're like like I was the one going this looks stupid like you know people go like dads like don't want to watch your stuff and they go who's that and then they're standing at the kitchen counter watching yeah the whole time. going she's gonna take that from him like <laughs> that's me watching One Tree Hill so that and that show they got so old that they had to skip ten years for the next season. <laughs> I'm not even joking. They didn't even. Because they were already in their mid 20s they when they do it. started. Yeah. So, like, when you see them, they have kids. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and you're like, that's Whoa. crazy. And it was the first show to ever do that, to have a big time job. That's so crazy. That's why they just recently I did, did it. I did not know that. They just recently did it with Riverdale a couple years ago. Oh. They did a big time, 10 year time jump because the highs and lows of high school football, he doesn't look like he plays high school football anymore. You know? Even from the beginning, they didn't look like they were. In the first high season school. of Riverdale, so good. And I stand by that. Everything else after that, I don't know what's happening, and that's okay. I refuse to watch that, even as an Archie comic fan. Yeah. I'm a big Archie comic fan. I was like, I'm not watching that shit. Because it just looked silly, and I was right. It not was, the first season, not the first season. It was pretty silly, you though. You watch the first one. It got silly, though. It did get silly, you're right. And not <laughs> yes. in a good way. <laughs> good way not in the goose way yeah. in the terrible way <laughs> in the off-putting way yeah. <laughs> hey y'all we're gonna take a quick break to thank our sponsor of this week's episode manscaped so this holiday season i'm giving thanks to my friends at manscaped i always want to make sure whatever i get my man is something he's actually going to use and their performance package 4.0 is absolutely giving me my money's worth babe he loves the product so much and his confidence has shot up since he started using them for all of his grooming needs so you can gift your man manscaped this holiday season so his tree stands taller if you know what i mean help him join the 7 million men worldwide who trust manscaped with 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code two idiot girls by going to manscaped.com so if you think your holiday spread is good babe it's time to give thanks to the manscaped performance package 4.0 or as i like to call it the perfect package for his package inside you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed rocker ear and nose hair trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold your goodies think of it as a cornucopia for his body but more importantly his balls so you can get 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code two idiot girls at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code two idiot girls at manscaped.com get him the best gift of all from manscaped his balls will thank you okay back to our episode so this person wants to be anonymous but they said i read one in middle school about one direction and they were all vampires and the person <laughs> in the fan fiction went to a concert and they chose her to turn into a vampire i'm pretty sure she ended up with harry but i know all the boys liked her typical uh i liked her typical she's not like other girls <laughs> i remember that when they drink her blood it all tasted different to them like different flavors or a different food and there was a lot of tension when I tell you I was up at 2 a.m. covered in my blankets invested in this. And because it combined vampires and One Direction, my two favorite things, my 13-year-old ass ate that up. And it probably affected me mentally. Also love you. We love you too, Queen. Um, that low-key sounds lit. That sounds like a lit-ass story. Like, Did you ever read Cirque de Freak? <laughs> no, what is that? They're like chapter books. Like they were, It was like a series when I was I in middle school. So. I read it. It doesn't, I don't think so. It was like this kid who like really wanted to be a vampire. So he followed around this guy who like was, would do like magic tricks and pretended to be a vampire, but he really was one. Oh. And they ended up tricking that guy into turning him into one. So, so he could join his circus. His they circus sound scary. Of freaks. They were kind of spooky. And the oh, pick me and me, was, the pick me and me was like, I love these books. Cause all the boys I liked read them. <laughs> or maybe I was just a big lesbian. Who knows? But <laughs> I did like the books. They were kind of spooky, but I did. Like it's them. applicable either way. I think I read the first three. But anyways, that's what this reminds me of. That does sound oddly similar. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person plagiarized. Inspired by. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I do. Maybe if I saw like cover art to it or something. But. And then I think they made a movie, and Josh Hutcherson was in it. I'm pretty sure. Josh Hutcherson. His character in Kicking and Screaming, I thought that was going to be my boyfriend. He's the bad kid, right? Yeah. The, the, grandpa's, the grandpa's kid or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> kicking and Screaming is the one with Will Ferrell, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Where he's like, him and his dad are always competing against each other. Mm -hmm. And then he has a kid and that's his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cousins, but yeah. No, that's Will Ferrell's brother because the grandpa. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. You're right. So it's like brothers. his uncle. The yeah, kid's uncle. The kid's yeah. uncle. Yeah. Anyways. But yeah. What do we think of this vampire story? 
You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of um, Passport to Paris. Yeah. How, like, the French French boys, they were for sure probably not French. Mm-hmm. And no, those... I think they were. Oh, were they? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, look at that. Me lying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. That we, like, we were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a perv. What a perv. How we were, like, convinced that those were going to, that was going to be us, like, if we went to a foreign country. I know. When I, like, the thought of any man talking to me made me sick to my stomach at that time. Not then. No, just because it makes me so nervous. Yeah. it's like, don't talk to me, but. (laughs) Remember what the movies, when they got older? Yeah. They would do, like, like. um, Like New York Minute? Yes, that was a good one, too. Uh The way that. Okay, wait, hold on. Now that we're talking about New York Minute. Remember how Jared Padalecki's in there? Yeah. There's Supernaturals in here a lot. (laughs) Supernatural. I never watched Supernatural. I watched the first episode of the first season. It's so scary. I'm not watching it. Yeah. It's always on in like the gyms. Why is it always? It's always on like daytime television. It has a pretty big fan base. Too. No, it super does. Yeah. But like I've, I've never, it's never really appealed to me. We already talked about how I feel about fantasy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Unless it's Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? But um, no, the, the scene in New York Minute when they break into the hotel yeah, room in the shower. Yeah. And, and you know, he like walks like, in. Is it my birthday? That friend? Yeah. He sees two of them. Yeah. I just think to myself, what a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like the way that you're like sexualizing sisters, like yeah. identical twin sisters. Yeah. I'm sure there's so many twins out there that are like, I fucking hate that shit. But it's like. I, I think about it now and I'm like, ew. I know. Especially if you think of like, it was reversed. Like if she came, one of the girls came in and there was twin men in there, how she would not have that response. She'd be screaming and get out of my house. Yeah. And they wouldn't write it into that either because like, it's that's not, men's. It's, hot. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's like men's fantasies so to gross. like be with two twin with. Okay. If, if men say that, like, I feel like they never remember that they're siblings. So like, if you have a threesome with twin sisters they have to like do each other too that's weird oh interesting which is why i'm always like you fantasize about twins but you can't have sex with them at the same time if you do you're a fucking weirdo yeah because you're making them do incest like interesting it's not like you're gonna do one and the other i always think about that like i'm like you're a fucking perv but maybe that's just me constantly being like you know what i mean (laughs) like to everything i'm like what's that supposed to mean like that's me always Dude, disgusting. I just thought about that in that, in that movie and it makes me want to fucking punch also, him in the face. Also, the other boyfriend, he's from one of my favorite Disney Channel original movies, Motocross. <laughs> Lesbian. Lesbian. <laughs> Wait, okay, so do you have any thoughts on this vampire That's fic? Jason's super, super gay awakening movie. It was Motocross. Motocross. Well, I think a lot of people, though, yeah, can relate to that. Everyone can relate to that. Yeah. Everyone always says, you know, stick it. Which I guess but not like, enough people say lemonade mouth or motocross. Motocross is a huge one, but also if you think about it, like, I mean, stick it, yeah, but like she's just a really hot girl. She's also straight in the movie. That's what I mean. So I'm like, well, how? Why are we all? But it's because she is so tall and and muscular. <laughs> yeah, she's she's like built, like she's fucking. Well, stacked. and she dresses and acts like a lesbian. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you and know all when she her comes fr- in? when really she's not, she's a pick me. Yeah. And that's she the is. Thing. She's a big. She, she's a feminist, but kind of a pick me. At towards the end, she yeah, becomes yeah, a feminist, yeah, yeah. but in the beginning, she's a pick me. Like you know, I'm thinking of the album where she comes in and she has the hat on sideways. Did I imagine that? Or she has that like weird paper boy hat on? That's like how she normally dresses. But yeah, I'm thinking of her coming in like that, and she's wearing baggy jeans and all those layers. A lesbian. <laughs> She's wearing a Nike sports bra into the ice bath. A lesbian. <laughs> the lesbian bathing suit uniform. That's what I'm saying. That is why I'm like, she's just a really hot girl. If they made her a lesbian, people would have liked the movie way more. They should remake it and do it that way. Yeah. That'd be even better. Like she runs off with one of the other gymnasts. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Like one that. But pull, like a competitor. That, yeah. A competitor. But like one that pulls her out of her pick me face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like makes her less of a pick me. Yes. Because she understands that the externalized. <laughs> masculinity hey, is her us in- to write the story it's her internalized misogyny yeah externalized so then she pulls her out of her pygmy face but you know she's being a big fucking pygmy in the beginning because yeah. she's like making fun of like girls who are girly or like you know they like to wear but makeup you type in stick it girl that's the fir- that's literally a lesbian <laughs> if i ever did see one it's, i also thought i was saying stick girl but but that's also the 
that's the scene everyone thinks about. Yeah. That exact scene. That's my type, guys. Look it up. Get it going. Let's see what we can find out right there. That's true. Stick it movie. Athletic. Dude, look at her. And in the, beautiful. Look at her in the thing on the. I know. So gay. That's when they were trying to market the idea of a tomboy, which is essentially either someone who's a lesbian or it's a pick me. Yeah. Or both. You know what I mean? Yeah. What What are you going to do? Some people said she's the man, but I'm like, when we were talking about, um, I saw someone saying, yeah, they should rewrite it or should have written it to have, um, them be lesbians together, her and Olivia. That would have been cool. And I'm like, but she's in love with her as a boy. She doesn't know that's a girl, which is the same thing with like Mulan. Oh wait, no Mulan. They're both men. Yeah. So it's even more confusing. Sorry. But even in Mulan, he's like disgusted when he finds out he's not a man. Yeah. So technically that one was way more homoerotic yeah. because like he was attracted to him as a man. Exactly. At her as a man. Dude, this is a lesbian. <laughs> Look at this picture of her. I'm going to put it up there. Yeah. Look at her. With a fucking trucker hat on. And she wears lots of, lots of layers. Yeah. Exposed forearms. That's a lesbian right there. <laughs> With the camo pants. Come on, guys. Let's be for real. Be for real. But in She's the Man, mm-hmm. you're right. But what she's attracted to is the sensitivity. It's not necessarily like what she looks like. Yeah. Whereas in Mulan, it's what he looks like. You think so? I think I think that's way more homosexual, like like feelings. Sure. Because maybe he's bi. Maybe he's bi. Probably, but because as soon as he finds out she's got titties, he's like, oh my God. Disgusted. Yeah. But then he like comes around. So, but in she's the man, she's like attracted to the personality. Yeah. She's not like, he's so sexy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as I remember. I just watched that I movie I love recently. that movie. So funny. So funny. Oh my God, that movie was so <laughs> We funny. were at the premiere, that's what I was saying, that was you. We were eating popcorn and going, Dina Vizzo, so holy shit. <laughs> I was all, Viola, do you like you have a secret? <laughs> oh man, such a great movie. I watched it recently. It still holds up. Yeah, it does. There's some Talk parts- about a movie where they're supposed to be in high school and they're for sure in their mid-20s. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Did Step Up come out before or after that movie? I think before. I think so too. Oh yeah, I think so. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All but right. Step Up 2 was after, and that's when everyone was like, oh, that's the guy from She's the Man. The guy who plays her ex, her shitty misogynistic ex. Yeah, well, they're both in the same universe. I just realized that, because mm-hmm. Channing Tatum's also in that movie. Mm-hmm. Step Up 2 is the best Step Up, and you can't change my mind. I disagree with that. You think the first one's the best one? Yeah. No, you're wrong. Because I like, I liked the girl more. I feel like she's a big pick-me in the second one. Yes, but the dancing is so much better in the second one. That I will agree with. And the soundtrack. That I will also agree with. I will concede to you on those. But you still like the first one? Oh. Uh, See? You're kind of changing my mind a little bit. The third one, not very good, but kind of good. The fourth one, very bad. I didn't watch any of the other ones after two. TBH. Unfortunately, I used to know someone who wanted to watch all of them. So. When we watched the first step up, we saw it in theaters mm-hmm. with my friend at the time. And... Um, when the little brother dies and step up, um, and he's crying and stuff, it was very sad. I was not crying, but I was wolfing down my Skittles. And as of, as we've talked about before, I have a choking problem. I choke very easily on hard candies. And so I was literally choking. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, you know, when you eat a lot of Skittles at once and they, they clump together like that. And then it's like one big yeah, thing. You're chewing them, yeah. Yeah. A it, big mound in your mouth. It's literally making my mouth like prickle. <laughs> it was like, it had like a sharp point and it was like kind of <laughs> touching the back of my throat. And then I started having too much saliva. So I started choking, right? Like, I'm not even kidding. I was going, ah, ah, ah. Like, I was trying to be cool because I was embarrassed because- um, my sister told me not to eat them too fast and I wasn't listening. Because we weren't with our mom, so <laughs> I'm the mom when we're there. And I wasn't listening and I ate them too fast. And I fast. held them and we'll finish your popcorn first. <laughs> <laughs> this is like when I'm in the sixth grade and Drew's in the fifth grade. So <laughs> it makes even less sense. So I was literally choking so bad that my eyes started watering and my face started getting red. And then I finally like I was like chugging my soda to like make it go down. <laughs> <laughs> like finally did. And then I literally was like, ah. I was literally like breathing like that. And I was like, Oh my God, that was so embarrassing. Like in my head. 
And then um, when I turned around, like, because I kept turning this way because I was embarrassed because I was joking. <laughs> and then my friend was like, are you crying? Yeah. And then we thought she cried when the brother died. And I was like, no, I wasn't. But I but I let them think I did that because I just didn't have the courage to tell them I was choking on a Skittles no, mound. I was choking <laughs> On a Skittles mound that I had created. I was gonna say I choked on a hard candy once, and it was in church, and I couldn't tell anyone. Like I couldn't talk as I'm choking on a hard candy. Yeah. So I told my cousin my throat hurts. So she took me outside and like I was like I need water, and all she had was soda. (laughs) Nine a.m. So did it kill it or what? (sighs) Yeah, yeah, it was a jawbreaker. Yeah, that's what I told you guys that one time. I was choking on a chip from Chipotle. Yeah. And it said like to get things to flush on your throat, you drink soda because the bubbles will dissolve it. Which is true. because Which like makes me think, what is it dissolving in my body when I'm (laughs) consuming it regularly? The way that I was living, I'm a living testimony to that life saving. Call us the doctors. (laughs) 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 Okay. This one's from Al. And they said, I wrote a fan fiction on Instagram when I was 13 about One Direction being vampires. Oh, wait. Oh, this is another one. Yeah. When I was a human girl who would live life and then reincarnate, I was destined to be mated to Niall, but somewhere along my lives, Louis fell in love with me and I ended up with him. But it was a love triangle because I couldn't deny the pull between Niall and I. The ending was me having some near-death accident and remembering all my past lives and ending up with Niall. That one sounds pretty good. That does sound good. See, but see tragedy once again. Yeah. It, we always got to work in tragedy. There's fantasy in there, though, with the vampires. So at least that, vampires, that levels it out a little. Yeah, vampire. That's true. Vampires I can get behind. That one actually sounds pretty lit. They both do. Both of those vampire fix sound pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't agree with the people that you end up with. <laughs> Me personally. You don't want to end up with, with Niall? I'm not a Niall girl. Well, if you had to pick between Niall and Louie, who would you pick? I would pick Niall. Yeah. Mm, I've seen some interviews of Louie recently promoting his music. I'm like, damn, was I... Oh, well, obviously I was on the wrong fucking person. I picked Liam. So <laughs> yeah, you, anyone's an upgrade from your pick, <laughs> to be honest. Mine, I picked out the gate. I know I was a hairy girl. Yeah, no, I, I know. We all know that. If I had to pick, I'd probably pick Nile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. This one's from Ava. She said to preface this, I found this fan fiction during September, 2020 when Draco talk was at an all time peak. Interesting. And Dramini was really big. That's Draco and Hermione. I know. I remember from the last, when I rewatched it back, I did sound like I said Dramini the last time. So (laughs) I apologize. Okay. I read it because I was gobbling down that enemies to lovers, but I got very weird halfway through this fanfic is called breath mints and battle scars, (laughs) battle scars. And it's set after Voldemort is defeated and Death Eaters are tracked and punished. Draco went through trial and was allowed back into Hogwarts and he conveniently ends up in the same apartment block as Hermione and angst ensues. I don't remember all of the details, but the main theme was that Hermione tried to teach Draco that magical racism is bad and they hook up later on and she and then she put in parentheses strange behavior. What I remember so, so vividly is that their first hookup was in the hospital ward and he tried to make it rough on purpose so she wouldn't enjoy it and would hate him. And Hermione went, no, you don't get to ruin this for me and tried to make it gentle. What? <laughs> that makes me low-key sick. Bro. She went, I hate that this is a core memory for me now since I can picture what I read in my mind very clearly. The story gets wild after this. So unfortunately I dropped it, but it's had a lasting impression on me. <laughs> The way that made like my butt clench when she, you know how like that meme of like, I could fix him. Like if I saw him, first, like, so I'm watching the new season of the L word. If Finley existed around me, I could fix her. I already know that with my whole heart. Same with Kendall Roy from succession. No, you it's can't. a sickness. That's lust. That's but, not, um, that's not anything more than that. But Draco, I feel like I could fix him. That's, one of the, like, <laughs> that's what I want you bitches to know who, who feel like you're Bob the builder and can fix people. Yeah. It's nine times out of 10. You just want to fuck them, which is fine. You think so? Absolutely. Okay. That's it's lust is what it is. Yeah. Like, and you're trying, to them and that's fine it's not the parts of them that you're like oh i could fix them it's like i want to fuck this person and i feel like i could make peace with the problems <laughs> that's literally what it is so like Stupid. if you process that i promise you like fuck them and then leave you know you can have you can have fuck buddies like you could have you could have side pieces like or people that are just like friends with benefits you could do that but that's literally what that is. I've always thought that like people who are like, oh, I, besides the fact that I feel like a lot of times people who are like that um, just have a lot of love to give and they want to like 
take care of somebody. That's just innate, but like you would do that with anybody. You you can externalize that feeling towards family members mm-hmm. or like friends. You know what I mean? No, with that, it's just less. And there's nothing wrong with that feeling, <laughs> but just be honest with yourself. <laughs> like, you're just like, I really want to sleep with that person. And I feel like I could be okay with the magical racism just for a little. <laughs> Oh. Just for a little. <laughs> I was going to say he would never pick me because I'm not white. So. Well, there you go. But who knows? Maybe he would. Huh. Who knows? Ba- breath mints and battle scars. Huh? Battle scars. Is that how they say it? it I doesn't... like how that's become one of the things that we say besides, <laughs> I want to take a pig. Yes. And <laughs> yes. What did I tell you about yeppers? <laughs> what, do <we laughs> what do we think of this? What do we think of this fanfic? I think that it's spicy. It sounds spicy. Lemon. <laughs> lemon. <laughs> That's such a lemon. <laughs> That's how y'all sounded correcting us. You know what? This is what I will say. I'm 27 years old, bitch. I don't maybe, need to know what lemon yeah, means. Well, maybe you should be thankful that I don't know that. Like, maybe we should all just thank ourselves that I, I don't know I that. I already do so many embarrassing things on the internet. <laughs> you're fucking telling That's me like lemon is one of the least of my worries no shit i would say the goya boots is probably worse for me is it goyard is that the word you were thinking yeah of? goyard okay that's what i was thinking what i watched when something. i said goya you're like those are beans <laughs> <laughs> those are beans and you would know because you're a big bean freak <laughs> what the heck why did you call me that? I'm not a bean freak. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself, bitch. Oh I'm vegan. I don't have a lot of options. Beans. Oh, so you're not a bean freak? <laughs> Beans are meat. <laughs> Speaking of bean freak, I'm definitely going to get Chipotle after me this. Me too. <laughs> Dude. I literally thought that one. I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do a new segment. What did you, name one thing you cried about last week? Because no. <laughs> I was thinking about how I cried because they fucked up my horse. <laughs> and I was stressed about getting ready. This wasn't last week, but I did cry once when they forgot my sauce from Popeyes because I was so fed up with them. Like, yeah. I've told Billy so many times do not fucking order Popeyes because they never. Put the sauce in that bitch, like ever. It's so fucking annoying. Like the way that they just, it's almost like they do it on purpose. And their chicken chicken with no sauce is fucking dry. Like the fries. They're so so fine. But they have a Mardi Gras mustard that's like spicy honey mustard. It makes my my like cheeks prickle because it's kind of sour. But it's so fucking fire and i will not eat their chicken like he literally got it and he was so upset because they didn't have the sauce and i was like throw it away i don't want it we didn't even eat it like we ate some of it because i have do have some sauces in my fridge but like i couldn't eat all of it the people have been talking about fry sauce what the fuck is fry sauce like like specifically for fries no, I, I, I think it's an East Coast thing. Everyone's going to be like, it's spicy lemon. <laughs> lemon. <laughs> lemon. Um, I think it's campfire sauce. <laughs> From, it's like special sauce? No. It's like ketchup and mayo mixed together. Well, campfire sauce is barbecue sauce and oh, mayonnaise mixed yeah. together. So I think it's like that. It might be ketchup and mayonnaise now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Campfire from Red Robin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ranch period. I'm a fuck up. Not, it has to be vegan. It hurts me telling me if I don't. But I've never been a big ranch girl. The Ranch at Islands, if you're from Southern California, I don't know if they have islands everywhere else. It's the top tier ranch. <laughs> That's how I feel Can about Can confirm. That's how I feel about Mardi Gras mustard from Popeye's. I was watching this girl. She was eating McDonald's in Korea. Yeah. And she was like, there's so many different fried chicken sandwiches there. And I'm like, dang, those look good. With like mozzarella sticks in it. I know. Crazy. I've seen. But she was eating this like Cajun sauce. It sounds like something you're describing. Yeah. Well, you like mustard, not really like. For my nugs. Yeah. When I'm, I'm my nugs. when I'm eating my nugs or my tendies, I want a, some sort of mustard. We're talking about sauce. ranch. I just want to eat ranch all the time, <laughs> all the time. I'm not a big ranch. The follow girl. your heart ranch, vegan ranch is the best one. Oh, that's and then cool. 
There's a plant-based one that Target does that's also really good. The plain one. I have the avocado one right now, and that one's nasty. <laughs> I'm not a big avocado girl So I just stocked up on two (laughs) vegan ranches. Nice. (laughs) Throw that shit away. On that note, we're going to end this episode right here. Thank you so much for listening all the way through to this episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. If you want to listen to other episodes, they're available everywhere you can stream podcasts. And the video version is on our YouTube channel. Um... Again, we are going on tour. Please visit 2idiotgirls.com for tickets. Yes. Ticket sales are getting lower, so make sure you're looking out. You can get them for Christmas. You can get them for Black Friday gifts for people. I don't know. New Year's. You should, you should come see us. We, you just, should come we see love us. you all and we want to meet you. It's going to be super fun. All the dates are in January, so again, visit 2idiotgirls.com for details on that. But other than that, we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.